Parallel justice provides a new framework for responding to victims of crime. Basically, the theory is based on the premise that in addition to holding people who commit crime accountable for the crimes they commit, we have a separate societal obligation to help repair the harm that they've created. So what this means is that when a crime occurs, in addition to all the traditional criminal justice responses where we try and find the person who committed the crime, prosecute that person, hold them accountable for the crimes they've committed, maybe sanction them in some way, in addition to all of those responses, as soon as that crime is reported, a separate set of responses for the victim would be triggered. Those would involve things like immediate response, practical assistance, crisis intervention, trying to get that victim back to a sense of safety and prevent repeat victimization. And then when their more urgent needs are met, we would provide long-term assistance according to what they need. Basically, we would acknowledge the harm that's been created and do everything we can to address it. What parallel justice does, what this new framework accomplishes, is it puts our communal response to victims in the justice framework rather than relegating it to charity or discretionary government programs. Ultimately, what that means is that it creates a set of expectations on the part of the public and it acknowledges obligations on the part of governments, communities, and individuals. Well, these 10 parallel justice principles that I've created are based on the needs that most victims of crime share, and that is to feel safe, to recover from the trauma of the crime, and to regain a sense of control of their lives. And that changes everything from the first police response that they would not only be gathering evidence and looking for the person who committed the crime, but also doing everything they can to prevent repeat victimization, focusing on the victim's needs through the prosecutor's emphasis on safety and bail decisions to giving victims priority access to social services and resources that would help them rebuild their lives. So we would create, in essence, a very communal comprehensive response to victims that addresses those needs. Restorative justice processes typically involve a victim, a harmed party, maybe their family and friends, and the offender or the person who's responsible for committing the crime and their family and friends. And the idea, as you know, is to see if both parties can get more information about what happened Perhaps the victim can shape what happens going forward. They're much more likely, for instance, to get restitution than they are in the traditional criminal justice process. And they may even see some remorse on, on the part of the offender. And those can be tremendously satisfying experiences for victims. I believe that those should be offered to victims of crime, but they differ. This process differs from parallel justice in two fundamental ways. One is that Typically, restorative justice processes, understandably, must involve an identified offender who has admitted culpability. So that right away limits the number of, vi of victims who can participate in them. It's a very small number through, through our criminal justice processing. It just doesn't happen. The second fundamental difference is that in parallel justice responses, we're talking about creating a communal response that provides a very active and robust role for the government. I don't really want to let the government off the hook, and I don't believe that the restoration that a victim is, needs and is entitled to should be limited to what the offender and that local community can provide. So parallel justice is a more comprehensive, overarching communal response. Restorative justice options should exist for those victims who want it within it. Lots of communities around the country are piloting parallel justice initiatives. I've worked with probation departments and police departments, but I'd like to give two particular examples. One is the Redlands, California Police Department has adopted parallel justice as a cornerstone of the department. They've put helping victims rebuild their lives as one of their core principles on their website. So they've tried very hard to align the entire operations of the department to parallel justice community to parallel justice principles and not make it an add-on program. So they've done things like 
all responding officers are trained not only to be looking for evidence, but to focus on preventing repeat victimization. How can I help this person be safer and make it less likely that this will happen again through either target hardening or cocoons, which have been tried frequently in England, or other ways to change the pattern and, and break the cycle of, of crime. Another thing they do is they have 911 operators sending notes to uh, people who have called the department about six weeks after the initial call saying, we're thinking of you, what happened to you is wrong, and we want you to know we're here for you if you need us again. This is, this is really um, speaks volumes about their attitude towards victims of crime. In Burlington, Vermont, I'd like to talk about two other completely different initiatives. One is the Parallel Justice Commission that was created by the governor and the mayor of Burlington. This commission has heads of all criminal justice agencies, police, prosecutors, courts, corrections, etc., as well as social service agencies and nonprofit community-based organizations. They meet quarterly. They listen to victims of crime who feel that they were not treated properly in any way at any part of the process, and they try and help change the policy or practice so that that victim gets what they need. The second part of their mission, though, is to try to determine whether that victim's experience points to systemic problems. And if so, they do everything they can to address those. This is a big statement to the Burlington community that victims' experiences are a high priority, their community cares, and they've made big changes. Second example is they've created something called the Parallel Justice Resource Bank in, in Burlington. There they have 45 businesses who have contributed free or discounted goods and services so that victims can get things that they might not otherwise get through either compensation or insurance that, again, will just help them get back on track. Some of these things are necessities like food or clothing or moving expenses. Some are things just to help them feel good and know that their community cares, like a massage or um, a free haircut. But these things matter, and it's launched a whole campaign in Burlington that says, um, how does it go? It's Justice Burlington style, which is really a very important message. Well, they can get a hold of my book, which is Parallel Justice for Victims of Crime, published by the National Center for Victims of Crime, and take a look at our website, www.paralleljustice.org.